الله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أسأل الله أز وجل يجعل نياتنا خالصة لوجه الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Welcome to our program entitled Understanding the True Way of the Salaf, Belief, Practice, and Spirituality. And uh, this topic is an extremely important topic because we live in a time where our effort is to apply Islam in the most authentic way in following the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So hence, when the idea is to follow Islam in its most authentic manner, then what one would try to do is try to follow the way that was closest to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And hence comes this term as Salaf. So I should start by giving a little detail on the title. So we say understanding. Understanding, we can say al-fahm, right? To have a complete understanding of something is a total realization of the truthfulness of that matter. So if I give you the word in Arabic, we call it al-fahm, right? or understanding. And we should concentrate on this word because it's important. Oftentimes, we narrate things or we speak about things, we transmit things without understanding their realities. And this is connected to some things that our teachers always said to us. They said that you should not just narrate, but you should have a complete understanding of something. So here a lot of times we become sort of like parrots. We hear words, we just repeat them. With not understanding the terms or the words that we're repeating and the significance related to them. So for our point that we want, we want really understanding. Not only we're narrating words and terms and ideas, but we understand what they truly mean. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly calls us in the Quran to be people they use their intellects, right? Reflect, oh, you people of understanding. And even in the Quran, when those people were going to the hellfire, their saying was that had we only listened and used our intellects, we would not be companions of the hellfire. So there's the aspect of transmission, and then there's the aspect of understanding what is transmitted. So oftentimes, People get confused about matters because they don't understand the reality of terms. So we should always start with understanding terms. And one of the good things about the early books of the scholars, that when they wrote, they were very uh, keen to explain terms. So that every term you got, you understood its linguistic meaning and its religious meaning. Because not all the time that you get uh, information, it's all based on the language. So whenever we want to look at something, we want to look at meanings, right, in two ways. We want to look at meaning by way of language, right, and then religious, by way of religion. So if we take meanings of words, should I say, right? So if I take word, 
What does this word mean linguistically? And what does it mean in the religion? Why? Because the Arabic language was already here before the coming of the Prophet ﷺ in the revelation of the Qur'an. So words already had meanings in Arabic language. But when the Prophet ﷺ came, then words begin to take on meanings that were not normally used necessarily in the Arabic language. They had a specific understanding in religion. I'll give you like an easy one that you can memorize easily to stick in your mind. Like the word as salah right? as salah when we say as salah it entails automatically when we say salah we think of the ritual prayer, right? But in the Arabic language, that's not the original meaning of salah. Rather, the original meaning in Arabic language is a dua, a supplication. It doesn't necessarily have to have the format that we mean when we say salah religiously. So in the Arabic language, it's going to bear those. But a part of the salah is what? A dua. It's contained in the salah. But the original, so when you say a salah, you're going to have a linguistic meaning, a dua. But then when we have a religious meaning, it is words and actions that start with takbir and end with tasleem. They start with Allahu Akbar and end with assalamu alaikum. And anything other than that, religiously, is not a salah. You follow? So we should get to understand that. Now, understanding, that means we want to know it, its reality, what does it really entail, and we're talking about the true way of a self. So then we're going to have another term, a self. A self. We should say the early Muslim generations. The early Muslim generations. That means those who lived in the first three generations after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this term you should keep well because when we hear as salaf, sometimes that's where the confusion of understanding what is meant. When you hear the term as salaf, it is going to talk about as sahaba, the companions, at tabi'in, And at back at back to be so you will have the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the followers. And the followers of the followers. 